Hello, guys. Oh, man. Happy Friday. We made it. It's Friday. Time for Art Throwdown. I'm in my Sherpa because I'm cold. What else is new? And uh, hopefully I can get my lighting kind of sort of figured out tonight. Maybe, maybe not. Hey, looks like Frank might have power. Maybe. Ashley and Jim. Hey, guys. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hey. So, Frank, very curious. Are you, like, running your little phone thing off a generator, or did you actually get your power restored? Inquiring minds want to know. And I've got some crazy little projects over here. I'm excited. No power still? Oh, man. That is no fun, especially when it's hot and humid out. So, um, boo. I hope you guys get your power restored quickly, Frank. Generator failed. Ooh. All right. <laughs> How are you charging brick? Oh, okay. That's dedication. That is some dedication. Man, what a comedy of errors this week has been. Oh, Catherine, hello, welcome. We were just laughing because Frank is using a charging block um, to <laughs> attend Art Throwdown. And I am um, I'm overwhelmed by his tenacity at finding a solution. So they're saying Tuesday he's getting his power back. Dang. Yeah, the, like, this is, like everything that's happening. This is like peak 2020, guys. I don't know. It's so weird. Um, and then uh, the good news is we thought Russell was kidnapped. Actually, that was my theory. I was like, did he get kidnapped? But... Um, yeah, so I think uh, maybe his account will uh, soon be fixed. So fingers crossed on that one. Boy, oh boy. What a week. What a week. Well, the last, last couple of weeks have been just downright squirrely. So, ah, uh, yes. Okay. Um, that's why my kitchen looks so dark. I have to turn the lights on. I'll be right back. It's like it looks dark in here. And there's a reason. It needs light. <laughs> Okay, for real. Yeah, now I have more light, and it doesn't look like I am in a giant cave. Cool. Well, I have two projects for tonight. The first is this um, coloring postcard. I'm going to finish this up. It would not be a project for me if I didn't put glitter on, so I'm going to hit this with some glitter. And then I think um, postcard, just to make it easy and... Um, you know, that's my go-to when I don't know what else to make on any given night. So um, it turns out I often don't know what to make. So postcard it is. So I've got some awesome glitterific glitter. Got some gold here. I think these gold sparkles will go really well with my uh, finished up postcard. Hey, Nick. So that is what I'm planning to do for now. And... Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like we're on Russell watch here. Um, I really hope he finds an alternate account to come in through. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Maybe he's laying low just um, for caution's sake. I don't know. So I'm going to tilt down a little bit here. Start working on this epic sun. Give it a little glitter because glitter makes everything better. Oh, yeah, we got some sunbeams going on here. This is going to look super cool. I swear, when I do the glitter on here, on the throwdown, on the video, it does not do it justice. But those of you that have gotten a glittery postcard from me, you know who you are. And, uh, you know, 
it looks a lot more lifelike when you get the glitter in the mail. And it's not just on a screen. But yeah, for real, I had a theory going for a couple of days. I'm like, oh my God, I think Russell got kidnapped or like he's abducted or he's, I don't know, like somebody broke into his apartment and he's like being held hostage and like horrible thoughts. I was like, oh my God, is he okay? <laughs> Turns out he's okay. And I hope he gets his account stuff straightened out um, fairly soon because I'm sure he misses us. And I'm pretty sure he knows that we are talking about him. And he loves that, I'm sure. Pretty sure he loves that. And by the way, I actually started to um, mail out the rest of my um, art throwdown stickers. So each and every one of you provided that in the past you had provided your mailing address, you will slowly start getting your stickers. For those of you that did not already get the sticker through the bingo prize, you will be getting it in the mail probably over the next week or two. So keep an eye out for those. Okay, I think that is all of the glitter that I'm going to do on this, but maybe in the light you guys can kind of see it. See, We've got some good glitter going on here. And um, yeah, this thing is done. I'm done with this thing. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to wrap it in some wax paper and I'm just going to let it dry. Hello, Triche. Good evening. I hope everything is going well for you. So we have hit a bit of a snag in that um, somehow Russ's account got hacked and that is why he has been um, MIA the last couple of days. And um, yeah, not sure when he will return. If it were me though, just saying, if it were me, I would be making like an alternate random, some random account so that I could rejoin. But um, I don't know. He could also be laying low. We're not sure. We're not sure. Create mail, which is Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. Welcome. And, uh, and just a, a friendly uh, service reminder to everybody out there. Um, change your passwords often. And uh, use two-factor authentication on your account where you can. Those are good things to have, as we are witnessing. All right, I'm going to do a uh, postcard collage, because that just feels like the right thing to do on this Friday evening. That's what I'm going to do. And ordinarily, I would put uh, a bunch of scrapbook pieces on this, on the background, but I am just going to cover this with tiny pieces of paper that were in my bag. It looks like Jim is coming in. Hey, dude. Hello. Hello. So I wanted to give it time to see if anybody else wanted to join in, but since <laughs> nobody jumped in to hang come out with you, in. I, I thought yeah. I'd come in. The more the merrier. Yeah, come on in. Um, I did email Russ and told him that we missed him. I'm sure I, he I was eating him. that up, by the way. Right. I told him I was lucky enough to join uh -huh. you know, and hang out. And he said, like, thanks for, for um, jumping in and hanging out with Allison. <laughs> um, and he said, you know, he's still doing postcards. So he's probably had a little more postcard time with, uh, without um, social media time. You guys are all about to receive a glut of postcards from that man. Like, you're going to receive, a, like, a postcard a day from him. 
he must feel lost without his social media connection. Like that is, you know, he's on it so much. It must feel like, I'm sure he feels like a fish out of water right now. Right. Me too. Sometimes I'm actually on social media too much. Yeah. Ashley's working on her decapitated Mr. Rogers postcard. Yay. Right on. (laughs) Hey, Frank. And Frank, I was wondering if yeah. Frank might jump in here to hang on with you. Hang well, out with you. the weird thing is Frank is like hanging on. Um, his electricity is hanging on by a thread right now. Like, and by that I mean he has no electricity, and he is joining right, us right. by generator. So, um, actually, no, his generator failed, and he's using a brick right now. <laughs> right, he's just using a recharge to, like, to be able to use his phone. I had a friend in New Jersey. They were out without power for like 37 hours, you know. Oh and my like, god! But, but Frank, you know, if they said they're not power, not I hope he, gets, I hope he gets his power before Tuesday, because ugh, yeah, that sucks. That is none's the cool. No, that's not. That's not fun right. at all. Yeah, um, there's no hurricanes over here in California. Frank, we're pulling for you, man. I hope you get everything restored in in, in a decent amount of time, and you're not. You know, suffering over there for several days, which that doesn't sound very fun, especially not right, during you summer. Can't, you, yeah. you can't even go out to eat because if the restaurant, if you don't have power, the restaurants don't have power either. Right. No fun. No fun. Frank says, uh, I super like what you're doing. Um he says, I agree. It's easy to make it an Instagram account in 30 seconds. And he says, we're a good combo. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo. So you're doing a coloring page, I'm going to guess. Right. What you got? So I'm, I'm, I'm getting close to being finished with this one. Cool. Groovy. I like it. I'm just uh, coloring the, in, the insides of the, of the heart. Oh, I have a trivia question. Does anybody remember this guy? Oh, it's like Mr. Zippy, but it's for electricity, right? You know. Yes, um, his name was like something kilowatt. Does anybody remember this? Like he told you to be safe and like don't stick your finger in the light <laughs> socket. Or something. Yeah, like don't stick scissors in the in the in the 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 light socket, I guess, or a fork or a knife. Um, darn, I forget his name. Does anybody remember? <laughs> Ashley's like, electric guy. Yeah, he has a name. I, something kilowatt. Anyways, if anybody remembers, let me know. This came from a vintage stamp. I don't own the stamp. Actually, my dad started collecting those, those big, heavy, um, lead, and metal letterpress stamps. So this was his, and I stole a bunch of prints from it. All right, no. <laughs> like, well, I guess I, I will steal what you've got, Dad. So he's got that. Have you made any postcards from the letter stamps that you that you bought? The yes. Letter press stamps? Yes, I made um, some of my Halloween postcards. Actually, had Nick close your eyes for five seconds. The swimmy. Um, <laughs> so I printed a bunch. I, I stamped a bunch of these. I cut them out. All right, Nick, it's gone. And then I, um, I started posting them or pasting them on my Halloween postcards. So, yes, I did. Right on. So, they're, yeah, they're out there. They're going to be out there in the mail, hopefully terrorizing people that don't like clowns. And, by the way, if you are one of those people and I already know you don't like clowns, I will spare you. You won't be getting one with the creepy <laughs> clown on it. So, you'll get something happier like a pumpkin or a cauldron or, you know, some skeleton or bones. Or yeah, like get some skeleton bones up in there, but uh, definitely not the swimmy. Because <laughs> I'm not that cruel. Not that cruel. Yeah, so, like, I'm so curious. What did Russ tell you? <laughs> what did he so say? Basically, yeah, it was it was just short. He said, you know, um, thanks for checking in on me. Um, glad you jumped in on Art Throwdown. 
Um, I have more time for postcards and <laughs> like, hopefully he'll get it all worked out soon. You know? Yeah. Poor dude. You know, he's like, had a rough couple of weeks. I feel bad. Right. Hi, Jennifer. Um, Hello. And like, and I did exactly what Frank suggested. I made my, the, the double, you know, made it harder for anybody to hack my password. Yep. You know? Two factor authentication, man. It's the right. best way to go. I did that earlier today. So uh, hopefully we're good. Ready kilowatt. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, that's right. I should have known this because my dad said his name like five times. He's like, look, it's ready kilowatt. I'm like, who? So anyway, this was ready kilowatt. And this is from a vintage letterpress stamp right here, guys. Look at him. Isn't he cute? Look, he's got like the little nose. I just think that's so cool. So yeah, I'm going to put him on the postcard. All right, so thank you very much um, to, who, who found that? Ashley, Ashley found it. You get the gold star, thank you. And, Hi, Melissa. And Clocky, so, hey. So Melissa, I'm hanging out here on Art Throwdown. We do art Monday through Friday, and um, this is what I'm working on. Yes, oh, and Clocky just noticed my letterpress. Okay, now I'm just gonna indulge you guys because I can't resist. <laughs> um, I have these, they're upstairs and I'm too lazy to go get them, but I will show you what they look like once they are stamped. I've got a uh, porterhouse steak here. That one is vintage. I mean, well, obviously they're all vintage. Um, let's see, I've got, this looks like it came from a catalog. I've got a part of a real mower here. And the amount of detail on these things is just, it's impressive on some of them. We've got, um, oh, you guys are going to love this one. I got, I really geeked out over this. I don't know why, but here is a vintage drill press. So there's that. And that this is actually pretty cool. This is not my stamp. My dad bought, my dad is big into machinery and carpentry and metalworking. Um, so just as a hobbyist, like I, I, he did not strike me as the type of person that would get in on like rubber stamps or uh, letterpress stamps at all. I didn't think he owned any stampers. I don't think he did. But the next thing you know, he's like, look, I went to Walmart and I bought myself um, stamp pads. So now he wanted me to help him, you know, stamp them this past weekend. And like, you know, just because he wanted to see what they turned into. Oh, and uh, there's more. But wait, there's more. There's um, a person working on what looks like an old uh, milling machine, maybe. No, I'm not sure. Or is that a is that a letterpress? That might be a vintage letterpress. I can't tell. Maybe a letterpress. Could be a letterpress. Uh, there is some um, some kind of vintage polish. Yeah. So these are clocky. These are a result of uh, some antique fun that we had not too long ago. Hey, Dorothy, welcome to Art Throwdown. Welcome back, I should say. Yeah, so these were um, these were just things that we found one day walking through um, an antique show, and I was very excited when I found these. So the machine shop is really cool one to me. All right, so my father-in-law, he was a mechanic for United Airlines, oh. but he also had his own his own machine shop in the garage. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> cool. Yeah, my dad's oh. got a similar setup in his basement. It's just like wall to wall. There's like a bandsaw. There's a drill press. There's a lathe. Like, you name it. It's it's in there. Um, so, and a lot of it was uh, refurbished machines from like World War II. Like he would, is it was weird. Like as kids, we hung out in a lot of old factories or warehouses and I never knew why, but my dad would buy these old machines. Um, and don't ask me how he got them into his basement because they're they're just they're massive. Um, but he's got like he's got these massive machines, and they're all like heavy steel, or whatever. And he would buy them, and he would completely refurbish them, and then he'd rebuild them in his basement. And now they're they're all there. So. Um, yeah, he's kind of like a hobbyist. I don't think he was ever, I don't know how he knows how to do this stuff, but it's just, he, that's just how he's wired. He just does. <laughs> so, yeah, it's always fascinating to watch him. 
But now he's like, he's like, I'm getting a stamp with a drill press on it. I'm like, yay. <laughs> now we're stamp buddies. So it's a lot of fun. Right on. It's a lot of fun. Stamping with my father. It's a lot of fun. Oh, and here's another one. I love old logos. This is like a 1950s or 60s uh, Sunkiss logo. And I think we looked at this a couple of Fridays ago, but um, let's see. Rhonda says, oh, no, Clocky says that Clocky has a Steamboat Willie plate that uh, he needs to use to make some postcards. Rhonda says her father-in-law was a machinist, a machinist, machinist at tension envelope. All things envelopes. She was in heaven when they would go there. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And uh, let's see what else do I have that's kind of cool. Oh, I have like this little Viking or um, Norseman. He was uh, a little small lead stamp that I got. Let's see if you can see him. Yeah. So they're pretty cool. You know what I realized? I have actually not sent Russ any of the art throwdown stickers as of yet. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So um, I got to get on that. I got to get some of, I, I managed to put four envelopes of them together tonight for some of our um, members, but um, I am way behind on that. So I'm thinking this weekend, I will probably try to get more of those out. No, but that's really cool that you had stickers made and you distributed them for free, though. And they were right? like 20 bucks. I got them on special. It was Sticker Week at um, Sticker Mule, which, by the way, if anybody is looking to get any stickers made, um, this is what their logo looks like. I love these guys. Um, if you sign up for their email list, and it's backwards, so I apologize, but sign up for their email list. It's stickermule, all one word, dot com. And you can actually get um, holographic stickers. You can get clear stickers. You can get um, die cut stickers. Like you name it. Um, and yeah. So Frank says he hoped um, someone didn't hack Russ's post office box. Poor <laughs> Russ. He's had enough, enough stuff. Bad I stuff know. Like it's just it's been like a comedy of errors for this poor guy all week long. I don't know why. I'm like, dang. So I have finished um, my most recent coloring page. Awesome. Question, um, what do you do with those once you finish them? Do you make something out of them or do you just hang on to them? I, I just leave them in the book. Cool. All right. So you're very methodical like that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I've seen a couple of one, a couple nice ones that I will Decide what I'm going to color next. I like that one. It's Hi, Janet. Oh, hey. Hey, Janet. Frank just typed sticker mule backwards. <laughs> it took me a second. I'm like, what's Elam Rexitz? Sorry. Sticker mule. Yep, yep. So that's, um, and I am by no stretch like a graphic artist at all. Like if you can design something using like PowerPoint and then snap a photo of it and make a JPEG or like, like, like just like a graphic file, you can make stickers. That's what I've learned through that whole process. And it's totally worth it, by the way. 100% worth it, making your own stickers. It's no fuss, no must. You give them the design, they print the sticker. And I'm like, 20 bucks? Well, that's like taking several people to a Starbucks for fraps. So <laughs> I guess I should just put that towards actual something cool that more people can share. So that's how the sticker thing originated. 
That's how I justified it anyway. I'm like, well, I don't really go to Starbucks anymore. It's right. We're saving a lot of money. We're all right, we're saving some money during the pandemic. So. Yeah. My husband's like, hey, we saved some money. I'm like, well, yeah, it's because we don't go out to eat all the time. And um, we haven't taken a trip since last year. <laughs> like, a, you know, a trip where you fly somewhere. That kind of a trip right. with a hotel. With the hotel, with the hotel and the rent a car and all the other stuff. We haven't taken a trip since December, um, actually, when we took the family up to upstate New York to visit my parents for Christmas. Like that's the last time we took a trip. So, my husband's like, "Hey, how are we saving money?" I'm like, "We're just not spending money right now. We're just, you know, we're laying low." And we've, we really haven't been going out to eat either because the whole restaurant thing was, for a while, it was like you could just get takeout. I'm like, well, for that price, I'll just buy a packet of, like, steaks or something and make them myself. Right. It's easier. But although I will say our town did something cool. They took this little tiny side street and they roped it off. Now you can't drive down it. And they put this giant tent with like tables and chairs underneath it. And there's a couple of little restaurants and cafes down that side street. Um, so if you want to go there, you just, um, you know, sit under the tent in front of that restaurant and they'll bring the food out to you. So you don't have to sit inside if you don't want to. So it's kind of cool. They gave people the yeah. option. A lot of cities around here have done that, like close off Main Street. And so there could be more outdoor dining for those restaurants on that street. Cool. Um, and I mean, for the summer months up here, especially, it's it works. It works. Now, winter in Massachusetts is going to be uh, another story. But for now, at least we got that in case people want to go. And, like be social in person right we can hope COVID is over by winter right we can hope for that <laughs> we're hoping I'm hoping hoping yep and we just found out what the hybrid schooling thing is so not to drone on about it um, I'm just gonna tell you guys what it is I'm gonna leave it there so I don't go on another one of my rants because <laughs> I know you guys don't want to hear that right um, but they are deciding to do um, two cohorts, as they're calling them. So they're basically taking each class, dividing it in half, and one will be cohort A, one will be cohort B. And so um, one cohort will go to school Mondays and Tuesdays. Wednesdays, nobody goes to school. They clean it, I guess. And then Thursday, Friday, cohort B goes to school. So when one group of kids is in class, the other half is still attending remotely, and then vice versa. So... That, um, as of late yesterday, my husband spent like the whole night. He couldn't sleep. He's like, I can't figure this out. And he was like trying to figure out all the details. And I'm like, ah, don't worry about it, man. But um, that, I guess that is what they're doing in our town. They're, it's hybrid. So I guess. So on, on Wednesday when there is no school, is there no, no remote school either for the kids? I think there is remote school, but it's just they're not going to have anybody physically in the facility or they're going to have somebody that's in there um, that is like sanitizing stuff, however they do that. So, although I don't know, I've been hearing, I don't know if this is true, I've been hearing schools in Europe already started this thing, this hybrid model. And then very quickly scrapped it um, when they realized that it just was not efficient to do that. Like it was more trouble than it was worth, I guess. So my husband's like, hey, maybe they'll just scrap it and send them back full time. I'm like, I don't think they're going to do that here. They, like, I wonder if they scrapped it and made it all remote. I think they, some for some reason, I want to say they scrapped it and just decided to have them all back full time or something like that. I, so, I guess certain countries did that. I'm not sure, but yeah. Like that's kind of weird, but I guess whatever works for that country, whatever, whichever country that was. Right. <laughs> so. 
like I said yesterday, um, I'm glad my son is already out of school altogether. So lucky. Lucky. And I think uh, it seems like colleges are, at least the ones here in Massachusetts and Boston, there's a lot of colleges that are um, back in session. So I guess they're, they're doing their thing. In person. Right, However, however that works. <laughs> right. Some of my college students are going to go to school. Some of them are, their classes are going to be only online. Um, it's like, you know, yeah, we'll see how all that works out. Yup. We shall. And there's a lot of private schools, I guess, now that are doing their thing um, in person. So they're, but they're, but the funny thing is they're giving families the option. Like if you want to send your kid to this private school, but you only want to go remote, you can do that. But I'm like, no, wait a minute. There's a private school in our town and God love you if you can afford to send your kid there. But it's like the tuition is like $30,000 a year for this thing. I'm like, what? I'm like, are they getting a PhD as part of this, you know, instead of being in fourth grade? So, um, yeah, that's, um, I'm like, that's up to, that's, yeah, I'm just like, well, I, I guess if you have that expendable income and you got nothing else to do with it, if you want to do that, like, that's awesome. Good for you. But I, I was like, if your kid is going to a, 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 an institution like that, why would you have them go remote if it's like 30, 30 G's a year? That's crazy. So right. they're giving people so the option, but. So Janet's asking if you're cold because you're wearing your hoodie. I am. My husband puts the air conditioning on kind of high. <laughs> so yes, I actually, um, and it's weird, like it dropped into the 70s tonight. I was like, oh, it's cold here. Just, we've had such a hot summer in Boston. Somehow um, I adapted to it, which is unlike me, but I did. I totally adapted to it. People think I'm. People must think I'm crazy wearing a hoodie. I've got my Sherpa on here in the house, but you know. So can we see how your postcard looks so? Perfect? You read my mind. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. I so love far. this. The Saturn. Is that a scrap of paper, the Saturn, or is it a sticker? No, oh, it's actually part of a box of stickers. It was one of those, I don't know if you guys have ever seen those Mrs. Grossman's stickers that come in the little box or in the, like there's a roll of stickers in the box, but I got a three pack once from Savers for like a buck 99. And I'm like, oh my God, some child or adult cleaned out their desk and here's all these cool stickers. So next thing I knew I had like, they had like owls. Um, there were sea creatures and little sharks. And then there was the galaxy one with the planet. So that's actually where that one came from. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. So one of my local post crossing friends today, she gifted me with minion <gasps> stickers. Dude. Right. right now do, do do people like me in person in your town for their post crossing right so um so i went to my first one last year mm -hmm. and we were gonna have another one like right around when covid started ah. you know so so i met a bunch of cool post crossing people um because before post costing, I was part of this money tracking exchange called Where's George? Oh, yeah. Okay. And so three, four times a year, the ba the Northern California people would get together. So like for 15 years, I was going to meetups for that. And I'm all, post crossing has meetups? Yeah, wow. like I can't wait to go to yeah. one. And if like nobody organized one, I was going to organize one. But then somebody else did. So, um yeah, I've gained a bunch of postcard friends in Northern California through through that um, post crossing meetup. That is cool. I got to tell you, yeah. I haven't been to a meetup event in like years. 
years, 10, 10 plus years. But um, I, I don't even know if there's one here in Boston for that, but um, that's cool. If there was some kind of postcard, pen pail, post crossing, something or other here in this area, um, all, all things being equal and COVID not existing, I would totally go. Right? Like, because postcard people are some of the nicest people. Yeah. I mean, it's such, I love it because it's such a diverse group of people. Like, and like, ordinarily, some, some are like folks that I might not encounter, you know, day to day. Um, Cause I'm just like in my little, my little tunnel vision of working and doing my thing and just spending time with my family. But it's super cool. Just the number of people that I've been able to meet both through Throwdown and um, some through SwapBot as well. Like it, it's, it's awesome. It really is. It's a beautiful thing. And like the meetup I went to, it was 80% women, 20% guys, but I still had a blast. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's funny, I didn't realize how many years post-crossing had actually been around for. And I didn't actually discover it until last summer. And I found it by accident. Right, I had heard about it because um, I had been into postcards off and on for, but I only joined a little less than three years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. I found it by accident on Swapbot because someone had on their profile, like, I love post crossing. I was like, oh, wait, wait, what is this? And then, you know, I, f I found out what it was. Right. And I only heard about Swapbot because uh, Russ explained it on one of. Uh, one episode of Frank's podcast somehow and I need him to tell us the story because it's been it's been a long time coming um, so Russ if you're out there you gotta tell us the story somehow Russ got burned on Swapbot and I don't know if like I don't know if it's like somebody didn't follow if like it was like a series of people not following through with swaps or, or what, but like he had some level of, I remember it was one of the very first conversations that he and I had. And he was like, there was some level of um, discontentment that he had with using it, the service. I'm like, huh? So, but, th but then I think he probably used it a lot more than I did initially. So with that kind of a, a, exchange site the more you use it i feel like um you know the more people come out of the woodwork that um i don't know may do disagreeable things <laughs> i don't know but he, something right. but i'm like the dude got burned and i'm like i don't know exactly what happened but i'm like there's a backstory so inquiring minds i want to know Have all your experiences been good on Swapbot? Um, so far, with the exception of one, and um, it was actually one that I hosted. And what happened was um, this one gal signed up for it. She had a newer profile, and whoever she was supposed to send it to, um, and I forget what the exact, I think we were doing like a de-stash of our stationary collections that was the theme of it and it was one of the first ones I ever hosted on there and she ghosted and um, pretty quickly after that point um, the lady just never logged in again so I'm like oh come on so she basically did it she signed up um, just to get free stuff basically right somebody probably made her something or sent her something and she didn't do vice versa. Yeah, so she got she got something, but the person she was supposed to send it to, she never sent him anything. So this poor lady is like, um, just so you know, this person um, this person ghosted me, which is is no bueno in Swapbot land. So she didn't she ghosted her, and I said, you know what? 
don't worry about it. I will angel the swap. I will send you an extra envelope. I've got plenty to share. And she's like, no, 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 you don't have to do that. I'm like, no, please. I insist. Like it's my swap. I feel responsible. So right, um, right. let me send you some wonderful things from my stationery collection. And here's some cool handmade envelopes and here's some note cards or whatever. So, and stickers. And so I sent her a bunch of stuff. Um, but you know, and that was that, but Every so often that happens, but um, I, for me, and I think I had done a few dozen swaps on there, that was the only time that that ever actually happened to me. But I want to hear Russ's rant about it, because, I don't know, I just, I, I just would find it fascinating. Yeah, with, with post crossing, you don't know who the postcard. So if you get an address, you still have, you have to send them a postcard. Um, but you don't know where the postcards are coming to you. So if right. somebody gets your address and you never send you a postcard, you don't know that. You just don't know. Really? All right. So so how how post crossing works is like. Um, so in the beginning, you get five addresses. Uh -huh. You send those people a postcard. Then once somebody receives your postcard and registers it, then some other random person gets your address to send you a postcard. Mm -hmm. So every time somebody um, gets a postcard from you, they register it, and then your postcard, your address goes back into the database, and somebody else gets your address. Yeah, so so the algorithm will match your address with another person, and then they'll they're supposed to send to you, but you don't know who it's coming from, where right, it's what coming country from. It's coming from, yeah. So that's kind of the element of surprise, I guess, with that. Right, and so like when I when I pick an address, I could get like just what I get this week. I got Belgium, I got Germany, I got Slovenia, oh, I got wow. USA. Um, um, but during a time in the pandemic, there was you were only getting United States and Germany, United States and Germany, um, until the mail routes started opening up again. Yeah, and for a while there, for that reason, I just stopped using it. I was like, well, I guess I'll just use SwapBot instead because I can at least, I know I can send within like the domestic U.S. and I know it, you know, there's a, a better chance of it reaching somebody. Right. It looks like Janet has sent Nick a crochet postcard. Ah, that sounds awesome. So does the postcard have a picture of crochet or is the postcard actually crocheted? Like it's made of yarn. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, with a postcard backing. With a postcard backing. Okay, so yeah. Janet, did like, you use so a... She, like a... she crocheted to a piece of postcard. Do you use a first class stamp on that or what? How does that work? Wow. Yeah, curious, Janet, how did you mail that? <laughs> Anna just joined. Hi, Anna. Hello. All right, here's a progress pick of my postcard. It's getting there. That looks awesome. Thank you. Love the mermaid. Yeah. I think I I clipped that off of some stationery that someone sent me, but as you can see, this is a just an innocent box of graham crackers or at least that's what it's that's what this started out as. And then I cut it down to 4 by 6. So now it is becoming this. And here's where I'm at on my new color page. Does it say summer, summer love? Summer is it say summer love or summer of love? 
Summer of Love. Cool. So she used the non-machinable stamp and another forever stamp. A non-machinable stamp. What's that? It's it's so it's so they don't put your mail in the regular process. They put it in like a separate box to get hand canceled and not put through the machine. Oh wait a minute. Is that that like sixty something cent butterfly stamp? Yeah, it, does, however much? it doesn't always work using the numb, but some, sometimes it does, and I really hope it does for the for her cro- crochet postcard. Oh, okay. Russ told me about this once and how um, you can also use it on a square envelope because those can't be machined. And I don't remember the um, the postage denomination for that. But I want to say it was at 70 cents or something along those lines. Uh, Rhonda says 80 cents maybe. Jen yeah. Says yes. It was definitely more than like your average stamp. Hmm. And this is part of an envelope. I'm just going to show you guys. I thought this came from something Jennifer sent me in the mail or someone. Oh my gosh, I can't remember who. <laughs> anyway, so it's becoming part of my postcard, so yay. I actually don't remember who sent that. I thought it was Jennifer. Might not be. Yeah, yeah, Jenna, it's the dog face butterfly. That's right. That's right. Seventy cents. Okay, it was because it was thicker than a postcard. It had to be mailed as a flat. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, that just sounds groovy. Groovy. And I hope it makes it all the way to California in one piece. Me too. I've only had one postcard fall apart. Um, it still got to where it needed to be, but I always get paranoid about my postcards. I'm like, darn, did I put enough Mod Podge on? <laughs> now, most of the time, my postcards make it all the way intact. But today, I got this one with a big chunk of the corner taken out. Oh. And it, it was like, luckily, none of the address got messed up. But, like, that's a good chunk right there. Wow. Yeah, it looks like it got torn in a machine or something. Right. Hmm. See, that's what I worry about, though, is, like, because mine have so many little bits and pieces stuck to them. And I glue everything down, and I, you know. Right. I think the Mod Podge helps a lot, you know. And um, the sticker postcards that I've done. That's fabulous. No, thank you. <laughs> fabulous. The sticker postcards that I've done have all got there in one piece. Cool. And, and I don't own any Mod Podge yet. But I need to... What is the glue that Russ turned you on to? Uhu? The glue stick? <laughs> Uhu. Yeah. And it's. I have it all over my hands. It smells like really good. It smells like um, it's it's like slightly fruity. It is the most pleasant glue stick you will ever use. Sometimes, no joke, I'm using the glue stick. I'll just take the cap off and I'm like, it just smells good. It smells awesome. Right. It it's- smells like the inside of Hot Topic. Wait. <laughs> oh my God. You know what? To- you know, or you remember the store Spencer's? Yeah. In the mall? It smells like Spencer's or Hot Topic. Or it, it, it smells like one of those, but like there's something pleasant and also um i don't know i reminisce when i smell this this glue stick <laughs> hi lisa um janet rush is not here rush got his um his accounts hacked right now he's not um, kidnapped so... or abducted right he should be he back is too, not. But he his is account not was <laughs> yeah his account got hijacked 
which is unfortunate. But yeah, the Uhu glue is much better than Dollar Tree glue, right? <laughs> the, I would say this is a pretty sound investment because I have found um, some of the other off-brand glues, um, they dry out quickly or they just, you need a lot to cover a lot of ground. But uh, Uhu, right. I don't know, it just seems to do the trick. It, a little bit goes a long way and it's usually pretty reliable. And I mean, you can get a six pack of this off of Amazon for under, I think under 20 bucks. So, and they're, they're good sized glue sticks. These are the, these are the 40 gram. These are the thick ones. They do sell them a little bit smaller, which I bought by accident once, but yeah, you want the, if you're going to buy them, you want the one that says 40 grams on it. So yeah, I recommend those. Yeah, because right now I only have Dollar Tree glue sticks, and those are garbage. Yeah, I've tried with those, and I was not successful. <laughs> so I need to add some Uhu and some Mod Podge to, yes. to my collection. Yeah, um, definitely, definitely. Those are, those are good things to have. Oh, so she mailed him an envelope, orange envelope with a Whataburger face mask. And Whataburger, their color is orange. So the face mask is probably orange. And I like uh, Whataburger. I like Whataburger. I've been to Whataburger before. On one of your work trips, probably, right? Yeah, it was... Uh, it was either in Texas or like... Detroit or somewhere like that. Somewhere like that. Because I know they're based out of Texas. They're probably in some other states around Texas, but mm -hmm. um, they're not like all over the place. Yeah, no, this one was probably somewhere in the Dallas area, I want to say. Or he, uh, no, no, it was Houston. Houston. Yeah. Yeah, I tried Wetto Burger when I went to visit my son in Houston. I mean, it's not in and out, but it's, it's, it's good enough. It's good enough. Oh, wow. Um, Ashley says, watch the time. We have nine minutes left. Huh. All righty. Thanks for keeping us honest. I never look at, I, I'm horrible at this. I never look at the time. I'm like, la, 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 <laughs> until it cuts me off. Right, because... Usually, Russell noticed when I put five-minute warning, or Jim, tell us we have five minutes left. Well, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, do you and the kids have anything planned this weekend? Um, <laughs> of all places, we are going to a guinea pig rescue. Um, I have never been to this thing. It's out near the shore area, I guess. And, uh, they, it's just it, like, it's like any other pet rescue. It's just a bunch of guinea pigs and they collect donations like vegetables and whatnot for them. And, um, we're going with some friends who I guess have donated to them in the past. And the, uh, her, the, the woman's daughter wants to do a service project to help, um, provide food to the guinea pigs or something like that. Um, so uh, we are going on Saturday to check out this guinea pig rescue. I am hoping that my kids aren't like, hey, we need to we need to bring some of these home. I'm just like, I don't do pets, okay? <laughs> I am not a I'm not a pet person. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not home or well, I am home now, but I'm like, I'm not around enough to sustained pets i'm like it's hard enough with kids no pets man no pets as much as i'm sure they will beg um no right nope we had a guinea pig when josh was young it wasn't that hard you know they're self-sustained you know um, but don't you need to buy two easy. of them no, no you can just buy a single one and it'll be okay yeah, and how, you have to have a cage and 
toys for it to play with and stuff, but it's pretty easy, you know. But the problem in our house is that I always end up being the one that has to take care of stuff. So, like, when we had fish and we did, like, the aquarium thing a while back, my kids didn't do anything. They are just like, yay, fish. <laughs> like, you know, they quickly forgot about them. And then right, I was the one they who had to clean it. Promises. They will make promises to get the pet. And not, and not keep the promises. Yeah, and I was like, you know, what's up with that? I like, I got you guys, got you guys what you wanted, nice aquarium, and then like nobody did anything with it. So I said, okay, nah, we're not. If you want to go look at guinea pigs and say hi to them and hold them, that's fine. But I'm not buying anything because then they're going to be like, oh, if you buy one, you get the second one for fifty percent. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I could just see that happening. Ashley says you're totally coming home with a guinea pig. Oh, man. I hope not. I hope not. I'm sure they're cute. And, like, don't get me wrong. I like animals. It's just I am not down with the maintenance, um, even of something small that's, like, fairly low maintenance. I just, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I got too many irons in the fire. I can't. I can't right now with this. Yeah, I go back to work tomorrow. I had four days off. Oh, My nice. My brother went home. My son went home this morning. Um, you know. So you guys just had a massive family reunion, it sounds like. Yeah, I would say small. But it, it was a very nice service for my mother-in-law. We had about 10 people, you know. Um, it was really nice. That's awesome. Did you actually melt them together? They're not a school. Now, this, I don't know if this is a school. Oh, it's Yeah, I can't believe I actually finished a postcard. Ha ha. You got three minutes left. Um, and now the app tells me how many minutes I have, which is kind of cool. So I'm going right, to show you guys. Right, didn't used to do that yeah. before? Um, no, not until I updated the app. I had to rely on you guys to tell me when there were two minutes remaining. And then it does a countdown. It's like, there are two minutes. I'm like, oh. So this is my final project. All I have to do is throw some Mod Podge on this thing. Cool. And this is where I ended up with this one. That is cool. Looking good. All right. Well, um, have a great weekend, all of you guys. Jim, thanks for joining. And once again, being an awesome sport and uh, being my backup co-host impromptu. That's awesome. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome weekend and we'll see you again on Monday. And uh, we'll see what happens with Russ. Um, everybody send him good vibes out into the universe. Right. And hopefully hopefully he gets his account. Monday. Like he's about to lose his content on his account. I'm like, he worked really hard, you know, to put yeah, all these I videos hope, up. I hope not. You know, he has a lot of stuff. All his looking yeah. at stamps, you know. Yeah. I'm like, it's crazy, though, that all of his things got hacked at once. So I don't know how that happened, but um, I hope he gets everything back. So. Good vibes, everyone. Goodbye. Great to hang out with you. Bye. See ya. Bye.